All right, class. Well, I'm recording this video a little bit early because I'll be gone out of town next week on Monday on some university business. So I won't have a chance to record it then. So I'm recording it a bit early, but um, that's where we're at this week. So April 8th through the 13th is on project-based learning and copyright. So basically, I should probably flip those. But anyway, we're talking about copyright and kind of finishing our discussion of that. And then going on to project-based learning and talking about that just a little bit at the end here. So um, there's a little recap of open licensing that you'll take a look at, a few examples. Um, the open culture, it's been interesting, you know, to see how much creativity has been spurred by this idea of not copywriting materials or not or not following the default U.S. copyright and allowing materials to be open for all to use, to re remix, to add to, to edit, and that type of thing. So it's kind of interesting to reflect upon how much creativity has actually been bolstered or improved by allowing things to be open, um, at least for some things to be open. All right, so there are more readings then on copyright, kindergarten copyright, um, 15 copyright rules every student should know, and uh, copyright for Teachers, a quick and dirty guide, which um, is a nice post. That's from me, actually. It's a nice post about just what what should copyright, what should teachers know about copyright in the classroom. And then, of course, we have resources at copyright.gov. Um, they talk about different copyright rules in according to the U.S. law. And then Visualizing with Technologies is the chapter that you'll read in the book. So that's quite a bit of reading this week. Um, we also have a tech talk provided by Amanda on Google Classroom. And so it's a wonderful video and recipe about using cla um, Google Classroom for teaching and learning, which is a free learning management system provided by Google. So it's actually kind of exciting how much Google Classroom can really do for you for free. And it can help you to organize and manage your course activities. So you can take a look at that. Um, I, I think one of the drawbacks of Google Classroom is the fact that it lacks a good unified grade book. But other than that, I've used it before and found it very useful. And then uh, for the discussion this week, it's going to be a little bit more. You'll want to get started soon because it's more than just a, your regular basic post. I'm actually asking you to create a poster or flyer, or maybe I should call it a newsletter or page, that informs your audience about copyright and or fair use for their specific situation. And I think I mentioned this before, but I'll go through it again just a little bit. You're going to choose an audience, um, whether it's K-12 teachers, students in a high school, students in an elementary classroom, middle school media class, or students working on a written paper, or business e-learning department personnel. Your job is to pick an audience, then create a poster that informs them about what they can and cannot do with certain resources on the internet according to copyright law. So basically you're going to inform your audience about what what copyright laws or what can they can't they do with media that they find online. And you'll use one of these uh, tools. You can choose which one you'd like to use and then provide a link or attach your poster or flyer and then have a discussion about it at least with two other students posts. And then finally Project-based learning, you'll be learning a little bit more about that. There's a project-based learning link here that will take you to my textbook talking about this very topic of what are what is project-based learning, what does it include, and that's looking ahead to what's going on in the future in our class. So I think that's all for this week, so I'll wish you good luck in getting started.